when you study um, unemployment, uh, say in intermediate macro, you often hear about different types of unemployment. Uh, but one issue is that usually models cannot capture these different types of unemployment. Usually a model will just um, allow you to think about uh, one type of unemployment in isolation, and then people use different models to think about the different types of unemployment. And so, of course, that's very problematic because it doesn't give you uh, a global view of what drives uh, you know, unemployment and unemployment fluctuations. So, uh, but one advantage of the model we've developed here is that you can actually capture all the most important components of unemployment into just one single um, unifying framework. Uh, so that's, uh, I think that's, that's an advantage of uh, what we're doing here. So what are the um, types of unemployment that I have in mind? So often people are going to talk about uh, Keynesian unemployment, And by that, um, they often mean unemployment that's caused by a lack of aggregate demand. Um, then sometimes you hear about, um, of course, frictional unemployment. And, and people here mean unemployment that's caused by friction on the labor market. So of course, that's very vague. Friction is just a useless word um, that people use um, to mean basically everything that's not a, a perf, you know, a Valrasian a neoclassical market. But of course, in the world, is not a neoclassical Valrasian world. Anything of friction, you know, if what you start from is a neoclassical uh, Valrasian framework, that's just a useless word. Um, but you know, what people have in mind here is unemployment that would be caused by the difficulty in uh, matching uh, workers and firms. Um, and in our model, we have a specific uh, meaning for that. So that's caused by... Uh, cost or difficulties in matching workers with firms. Um, then another type of unemployment that people uh, mention often is what's called classical unemployment. Um, And so that's because it dates back to um, the classical economies that came even before Keynes. And this is an unemployment caused by uh, an excessively caused by an excessively high real wage, because that was how people thought about unemployment um, before Keynes. And in fact, even for Keynes, an excessively high real wage was a problem because Keynes had this idea that nominal wages were rigid. And so if you had deflation and prices fell, real wages would go up, which would cause unemployment. So this was something that was um, quite popular back then. So you have these different uh, types uh, of unemployment uh, that people often mention with these ideas. Um, and frictional, you know, possibly... Sometimes people talk about structural unemployment. I imagine that what they have in mind is something like frictional unemployment, so something that's caused by difficulties in matching workers with firms. Uh, but it's kind of hard to say because people don't really have a model of that. But you know, I imagine that that frictional and structural are um, kind of the same thing. Um, and here, what's going to be nice about our model is that it allows us to capture um, all of this components of unemployment. So let's see how. So where does unemployment shows up? So you can always see unemployment once uh, you look at your labor market diagram. All right, so I'm going to put, as usual, labor market tightness on the vertical axis. I'm going to put 
employment on the um, horizontal axis. Here we have age, the size of the labor force. So we know that on the labor market, we'll have our labor supply. It's going to look like this. In tightness, we know that we'll have a labor demand. That's going to look like this. Uh, and then we know that um, employment is given at the intersection of labor demand, labor supply. We know that the tightness is given at the intersection here. Um, and so where is unemployment? So of course, unemployment is going to appear here. So this is u, which is here h minus l. Um, and so, um, so here we, we can see direct, directly unemployment on the uh, diagram. But what you can uh, see, of course, is that, um, so I need to give you the expression for the labor demand, because there, once we have the expression for it, we'll see the different components of unemployment appear very clearly. So the expression for the labor demand that we had uh, computed is that uh, it was f of x, the selling probability, times a times alpha divided by the real wage, w over p, 1 over 1 minus alpha times 1 over 1 plus tau hat of theta alpha over 1 minus alpha. So this is what gives us the position uh, of the labor demand. So that's what gives uh, employment as a function of um, tightness. And, and here we're going to see the different elements that, this, uh, that are going to drive unemployment. So you can see that the real wage, for instance, shows up here in the denominator. And so that captures um, the classical component of unemployment, because you can see if the real wage is high, so labor demand is going to be less. So for instance, that's what happens if the real wage goes up, your labor demand is going to be less and it's going to shift inside. And so as a result, of course, employment is going to shift down and unemployment is going to go up. So here we can see we have this classical component that's captured here, when you have real wages that are higher, Unemployment, uh, unemployment is going to increase. You can see the Keynesian component of unemployment very clearly too. So you can see we have f of x here that shows up in the labor demand. That captures the selling probability for firms. And of course, that selling probability is determined by aggregate demand. When aggregate demand is very large, selling probability is high. When aggregate demand is low, the selling probability is low. But you can see that this selling probability drives uh, labor demand directly. So if the selling probability goes down, if the selling probability goes down, or labor demand goes down, and as a result, unemployment is also going to go up. Okay. So this is a, a Keynesian element uh, that comes into play. Um, and then we can also see, of course, a frictional element. So here we have our uh, matching wage, and that's determined by recruiting cost. So if recruiting cost goes up, uh, you know, say it's more difficult for firms to find workers, so matching wage is going to go up, and that's going to depress the labor demand too. So you'll have something like this. And, uh, and as a result, we'll also see more unemployment. Uh, so here, this is uh, our Keynesian, Keynesian element. This is our classical component of unemployment. And this is our frictional. So you can see that all of this, uh, all of these ideas are captured here into the model uh, because Classical forces, frictional forces, and Keynesian forces all affect uh, all affect our labor demand, and therefore all affect unemployment. Uh, 